Hey, this is Aaron with Dynamic Perception. I'm going to show you a tutorial today that gives you the basics for taking your sequence of time-lapse photos and turning them into a movie. Now there's a lot of different ways you can do this and a lot of different workflows. I've written about some other workflows in the blog post that accompanies this video at dynamicperception.com. But I'm going to show one professional method using Adobe products. We're going to use Bridge, Camera Raw, and After Effects. And I'm going to show you the gist of this, but I encourage you to dig in deeper with each one of these softwares. We'll start out using Bridge, which is Adobe's file management program. So the first step is to take your photos from your camera and get them onto your computer using a card reader or directly attaching your camera. And I would organize them so that each time-lapse setup that you have, those photos go in a particular folder of their own. So what I have here is I have folder 062, and it has all these time lapses that I shot um, actually at Larry's Beans, a really great fair trade coffee place in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, so in Bridge, you can see this series of photos. If I click on any one of them, I can see a preview over in this window. Now, if you're not seeing what I see, you can go up to Window, Workspace, make sure Essentials is selected, and if you want to, you can reset standard workspaces. Now if I go to the first image and I use the left and right keys, I'll hold down right and I can see a preview of what my time lapse is going to look like. If I use the up and down keys, I can see a quick preview that goes even faster. And I can make the preview window bigger by dragging these bars. Now I'm using RAW for these images and I'd highly recommend that to everybody because you get so much more control over the adjustments that you're going to make than if you were just using a JPEG. The next step is to change the develop settings on these images to get the look that we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of these images and change the develop settings and apply it to all the images in this folder. So if this time lapse had a lot of different lighting, like if the sun went behind clouds sometimes and other times it didn't, I'd want to find a good image that's somewhere in between the different lighting situations. It was pretty consistent here, so I'm just going to pick a picture from about the middle. Now, if we double click this, or if we right click or control click and choose open in camera raw, then the camera raw dialog box will come up. And from here, we'll do our adjustments. And there's a lot of different tabs that we can make adjustments in, but we're just going to focus on the basics here. And the first part of the adjustments that you can make are the white balance. And we can use these sliders to tweak them. Now on the temperature of the white balance, if you go to the left, you're going to get things a little colder. If you go to the right, you're going to make them warmer. The tint is some fine tuning in the same way. And with all these controls that you're going to have, it's really subjective. There's no one correct way to process things. It's just a matter of getting it the way you want it to look. And once you have it about how you like, then you can move on to the next settings. Now if you want Camera Raw to take a stab at choosing the settings for you, you can click Auto and it'll automatically adjust it. And that doesn't look too bad, but I'm going to go back to the default by clicking default. If it was way underexposed, I could use the exposure to bring it up or down, however I want. And as I move this slider, if I want to go back to its default value, I can double click the triangle. Now, one thing I know right away that I want to adjust is I feel like it's too dark in these shadow areas. So I'm going to use the fill light to recover the details that were lost in those shadows. So now you can start to see it coming out. Now the opposite of that is the recovery, which will bring out the details in your overexposed highlight areas. And I can tweak the blacks a little bit, the overall brightness of the image, the contrast or the difference between the whites and the blacks, the clarity, which is basically the contrast of the mid-tones, and then the vibrance, which will bring up the color a little bit, and the saturation, which will bring up the color quite a bit. Now I can mess around with this all day long, but it's all a matter of finding what I want with the settings. And I'd highly recommend you read some instructions on Camera Raw or find some tutorials online because it's important to know what all these settings can do. And once you have them the way you want them, the last thing you're going to want to do is adjust the workflow options down here. And you want to make sure that you have 16 bits per channel on your depth and you want the size to be the default. And these workflow options will apply to all the images you're working with in RAW. The important thing to watch for here is use 16 bits per channel because we're going to use a 16 bit per channel composition in After Effects. So I'll click OK. And then when all the settings are how you want them in Camera Raw, you click Done. 
And you can see this icon was put on the image here, which represents the develop settings. So what happened behind the scenes is a sidecar file was created, which is a file with the extension .xmp that goes side by side with this raw image. So the xmp file will be the same file name as this raw image, but it'll be .xmp instead of .cr2 or whatever raw format you're using. And that .xmp will contain all the develop settings. You can delete the .xmp file and you'll go back to the default develop settings that you have for this image. We're going to copy the settings here by control clicking or right clicking, choosing develop settings, copy settings, and then we're going to select all the images in the folder, and then we're going to control click or right click, and we're going to do develop settings, paste settings. And now you get to see which of those settings that you just adjusted that you want to paste. And we're going to leave this as it is. Click OK. And now it's updating the settings on all those images. Now this might take a little bit as your thumbnails are adjusted. And you can already see that some of them are starting to change. We don't even have to wait for all these thumbnails to update. At this point, we can go to After Effects. I'm going to switch over there. So in After Effects, we'll open up a new project. And the first thing we want to do is we want to go up to After Effects, Preferences, Import, and we want to choose Sequence Footage, the preferences for how your sequence will be imported. Now this is important, and the setting that you choose really depends on your workflow. And what's important is you want to make sure that what you choose here is the same as the composition you're using in After Effects. And what you choose will depend on how you're editing it. And each workflow is going to be different. For this one, I'm going to use 23.976, which is 24p with NTSC devices. So I'll click OK now that that's set. And I'll create a new composition. And I want to use a uh, HD setting. So I'm going to go down and choose HDTV 1080 24. But I'm going to change that to the same as the import settings, which were 23.976. And I'll click OK. Just to reiterate, make sure your import settings on the sequence and your composition settings have the same frame rate, otherwise you're going to get some dropped frames. So the next step is to import our image sequence. So if we just double click here in the project window, we'll get an option of where to import those images from. And now I'm already in the right folder, but things are not right here because I'm not sorting them by name. If I click to sort them by name, I'll see the very first one, which is this 0001.cr2, which is my raw file. And as you can see, it has a sidecar, a .xmp file, which tells it how to process the image. But I'll choose the raw image, the very first one. I'll make sure that camera raw sequence is selected, or JPEG sequence, if that's what you're using. And I'll press open. And if all the images are in sequential order, we can open this sequence. Now the developed settings that we have for that first image will come up. And we've already developed it, so we don't need to adjust that at all. So I'll click OK. Now the sequence has come in, and you can see its size, 3,888 by 2,592. Uh, you can see the frame rate. So the next step is to get it into the composition. So we can drag it here, or we can drag it down here. Now we're working with a HD size frame, so this image sequence is actually a lot bigger than that. So we're going to have to essentially crop this down to get it to fit. So we can do that by clicking on the layer with the image sequence, pressing S to bring up the scale parameter, and we can scrub around here to scale it down. And then we can click and drag on it to move it up. We can go up until we get it to fit within there just right. And then because it's a different aspect ratio than HD, we're going to have to choose whether we're going to cut off some of the top or some of the bottom. I'm going to cut it off some of the top and a little of the bottom. And at this point, if I wanted to do some more advanced moves, like scale in on it or move the position, I could set up keyframes to do that. But for the scope of this tutorial, I'm just going to show you now how to export a video. So I'm going to drag the work area, and I'm going to hold down Shift so it snaps to the end of this layer, just so that when I'm rendering, I don't get blank space at the end of the video. One more thing you'll want to do to make sure you're outputting at the optimal level is you'll want to choose where it says 8 BPC, 8 bits per channel, and click on that. And this is your project settings. And for the color depth, we're going to use 16 bits per channel, and click OK. 
This will give you more color information to work with in your editing software. So at this point I could rename the comp if I wanted to give it a more exciting name. I'll click Command K on a Mac or Control K on a PC and I can name it. I'll click OK. So now I'm ready to export my movie. So I'll click on the composition, I'll hit Control M on a PC or Command M on a Mac. And here's where I choose my settings for the export. Now the settings you choose are really going to depend on the workflow you're using and the editing software that you use. I'm not going to go into a lot of details, but you should definitely look into what's best for the editing software you're using. I'm going to choose for my output module a ProRes setting because I'm editing in Final Cut Pro, but you'll want to look into that for your software. And then we choose where to output to, which is the folder and the name we're exporting to. So I'm going to already go here and I'm going to call it 062. And when you're ready, you click Render. Now this might take a little bit of time, especially because we're using a 16-bit per channel composition. And when it's ready, I'll show you the finished product. And that's it. That's the basic workflow using those programs. But there's a lot more you can learn, so I recommend reading the manual, learning from other tutorials, and experimenting. I hope that helped you understand the basics. For more information, check out dynamicperception.com and watch for new tutorials soon.